Riding off the back of a modern automotive phenomenon, import racing, made mainstream by movies like The Fast and The Furious, EA has crafted a compelling treat for today's gamers. Aimed directly at fans of arcade-style racing, Need for Speed Underground boasts some of the most impressive graphics seen today, bundled with quality sound effects and gameplay. Gamers are given a good choice of cars the moment they turn it on. A major part of this title is modifications. These cars are just begging to be modded to improve handling and performance, not to mention a funky paint job and decals. All the mods enhance your racing, even the visual ones. Using a point system similar to Project Gotham Racing, drivers accrue points for style, as well as speed on the track. Hey, loser. <laughs> All right, check it. Maybe I can help. Just you and me, one-on-one. -on -one. It's money in the bank. Let's go. You want to be the best? You got to take these boys down. If you lose, you're gone. Got it? Good. Now move it. The career mode is the staple of the game, allowing you to claw your way through the underground racing scene, accruing cash for car upgrades and mods. Come here to find the latest races. The race map will show you where all the action is. To keep things interesting, there are several race modes, including drag, circuit, and drift races. There are over 20 tracks to race, but they do look very similar. Having said that, the graphics are stunning, and although the visuals can be a little bit over the top at times, the gameplay graphical quality is surpassed only by Colin McRae 4 on the Xbox. Hey, what you think? You digging it? Then you gotta win. No racing grab, no cool parts. The only disappointing aspect of this title is the lack of any vehicle damage. Not even a scratch. If you are a fan of driving games, this will bug you. But probably not as much as the lack of challenges. You still have to drive and drive well, but you won't have to struggle to get enough cash for your next mod. Beautiful, ain't it? I gave them the edge, and they blew it. You think you're better? Prove it. And maybe I'll help you out. Need for Speed Underground is a very playable, visually spectacular installment in an ever-growing series. This game will be a staple for race fans, and in a genre that is crammed to overflowing with half-paid titles, you could do worse, a lot worse. In the Dragon Realms, all is not well. The Fallen Dragon, Red, is using the Dark Gems to poison the life of the world. Five heroes must fight the forces of evil. Spyro, Hunter, Sergeant Bird, Sparks, and the newest comrade, Blink. Now is the time. Let the battle commence. Next on Control Freaks, Nintendo goes bongos and it's a Black Monday for the getaways. Let's all watch Control Freaks. Woohoo! Before PlayStation, 
GameCube and Xbox, there's a whole history of console gaming. The early 90s were dominated by the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Donkey Kong Country broke new ground on a console that gamers had thought had reached its peak. With stunning visuals for its time, and a character franchise that has been a winner for Nintendo for two decades, Donkey Kong made a massive mark on a generation of gamers. And all this from a translation error. Monkey Kong, the original title, just doesn't have the same ring. Fans of Pitch Black will recognise a new title in the lineup for 2004. Time for release with the movie, The Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay, is a first-person prequel to the film. Welcome to Butcher Bay. Triple Max Security Prison. Toughest slam in the universe. Impossible to escape. My name is Ian Stevens. I'm a producer for Vivendi Universal Games working on the Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay. And we're here at E3 this week, showing off the game, giving consumers and uh, retailers and the media a chance to play it. Uh, the game's done now. It'll be on store shelves June 1st, about two weeks ahead of the movie, which releases June 11th. And what it is, is a first-person shooter for the Xbox. Uh, pretty immersive hybrid game that involves some really unique key features. Uh, as a first-person game, we have a melee fighting system, a really simple, accessible feature. Uh, take users like five seconds to figure that out. Your buddy can go to the bathroom, you can pick up the controller, and you know, you're using a key feature. Uh, left hooks, right hooks, uppercuts, forward lunges, and a really in-depth combo system. And then Riddick has this ability to see in the dark. So, of course, stealth is a big part of this game as well. Although, traditionally, stealth is usually about avoiding conflict and getting through areas without being seen. In the Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay, stealth is more about catching guards unaware, you know, shooting out the lights, getting a dark room where guards are afraid, looking around with flashlights. Uh, then we have action adventure elements, which really capitalize on the amount of work that the studio put into making sure that the game was a great prequel to Pitch Black and the new film. You can interact with all these different NPCs in the world, trade cigarettes or money with them for weapons or information, take on side missions. Uh, there's a lot of character development in this universe, and there's a lot of that that's done through being able to talk to virtually anyone you see. And then, of course, we have an incredible action element. A lot of weapons that we're giving players to use with a lot of technology built around that to make the environment really interactive and really reactive to anything they want to shoot at. Lots of destructible uh, entities in the environment, things you can blow up, things you can use as a gameplay mechanism, you know, shooting down ceilings uh, or fans in the ceiling to, you know, drop them on enemies, uh, things like that. And of course the technology is also a big feature. Uh, at E3 for a couple of years now, people have been looking at games like Doom 3, Halo 2, Half-Life 2, and getting really excited about things like dynamic lighting and real-life physics and some of the incredible detail that can be achieved through things like normal mapping and really advanced bump mapping. And we do all of that in Riddick, and it's really obvious. All the per-pixel shading, dynamic lighting, normal mapping is used on every object and area and surface and character in the game. Uh, real life physics are a big part of not only the interaction but also the gameplay. And ultimately, the game is done and running at a smooth 30 frames a second. Um, and players will be able to pick this up in a couple weeks, have it, enjoy it, not have to wait like they're going to with a lot of these other, you know, big flashy games uh, that are, you know, starting to make people a little anxious. Only the one who can take out an army can break out of hell.
Hang tight, because next week on Control Freaks, it's another hair-raising ride of interactive excitement on the massive roller coaster that is computer and video games. <laughs>